Today we're going to make something very simple but yet delicious. Here I have with me double zero flour, and if in the Italian world that means deliciousness in a bag. Right, Jax? <laughs> he doesn't all, he's not all dressed up today. He was a little mad that we were out before we got here. So uh, he's happy now that we're starting the video, but he's getting a lot of fans, and I've got to say, I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> but he's a sweet little guy, but he is Abby's. Everybody coming into the restaurant saying, oh, we love your dog, we love your dog. He's Abby's. He's sweet. He is sweet. <laughs> he's really sweet. I wish he was mine, huh? But he's mine in my heart. I love him to death. Okay, so I showed you here double zero flour. And um, whenever you see this in the Italian world, you know you're either going to make pasta or pizza. So this is a very fine, uh, fine flour. Um, it is a little bit difficult to find. Like I, I can't find it in any of the grocery stores here. So yesterday I went down to the Choices Market um, in North Charleston. Just discovered the place. They have amazing um, Italian stuff in there. So I was able to find it. So if you are ever looking for great cold cuts or anything like that, um, specialty Italian stuff, that's a really great market to go to. It's right down by the Park Circle. So we're gonna use that and a little oil, salt, and water. And that is how we're gonna make cavatelli today. So cavatelli is a pasta. It looks very um, kind of rugged. It's not one of these per perfect shaped pastas. This is the recipe for it, and as you see, we have one, two, pretty much three ingredients, because a water one is always like a free ingredient. So we have um, the flour, salt, and extra virgin olive oil, and that's basically, we're gonna make the cavatelli with that. And then this is our sauce, and that's not a lot of ingredients either. Most of these things you guys already have in your house. You know I'm a, a real lover of mascarpone cream. I mean, you can use it in just so many things, and it makes riches. Um, so that might be the only thing that you don't have, and if you don't have it, you can just use pasta water. So I never want you guys to go out and like, have to buy all this stuff. But you will need the flour. If you can use all-purpose flour, what you have in your cabinet, it just might be a little bit more tougher to knead the dough must it might be. So I wanted to go ahead and show you what cavatelli looks like. These are very, like I said, they're very authentic, looking very rugged. Um, I made these this morning. And, mm, can you smell them? Mm -hmm. Like it just smells like dough, which is great. Um, and these have rested for about 30 minutes after I kneaded them. So that's why I went ahead and I made them for you guys. We are gonna drop them in the water later. Um, but first I'm gonna show you how to go, how to get to that point. So we don't need this boiling like just yet because I gotta make the sauce, but first we're gonna do this. Everything, when, when people think pasta, and I did do um, a video on handmade pasta, um, and we use the crank, you know, pasta machine and everything. But this time we're gonna make this one in a food processor. So you really can't get any easier than this. So like I said, food processor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the recipe calls for three and a half cups of uh, the flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour this in here. As my little thing says, a cup. So this is already, you can tell, like it's a very fine flour. So it's just gonna go right in here. I mean, you cannot get any more simple than this. One, and we're gonna do um, three of these and a half. If you had something called the semolina flour, which almost looks like a little bit of a cornmeal, um, you could add that in, a half a cup of that instead of all of it, this. Um, I did not have semolina. I thought I might have it at the restaurant, but I did not. So we're just gonna go ahead and use all three and a half cups of the same flour here. And then the half of one here. And you're not gonna believe how quickly this is going to come together. So we have all of that in there. Put that over there. And then it, the recipe calls for um, one teaspoon of salt. So we're just gonna get that out, the teaspoon here. This is a really, um, really simple pasta. You can use it basically um, with a marinara sauce or you could use it with a lighter sauce. I really don't recommend Alfredo with it because it's a, a pasta that's kind of thick and I'm always you know, really um, leery with that. And then we have one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And you can always tell if 
olive oil by the color of it. If this was lighter, it would be obviously more see-through. But this is very, if you look at it, it's very almost greenish color because mm -hmm. it's extra virgin. And it just smells so good. All right, so we're gonna do a tablespoon of this. And we're just gonna put it around in there. And then I'm gonna get one and a quarter cups of room temperature water. I'm sorry, baby boy. I gotta get up, go around you there. <laughs> you all comfortable already, huh? So I'm just getting, you know, tap water out of here. I'm gonna get one and then I'm gonna fill up the half. We're probably not gonna use all of this. Um, it just depends how, how well this mixes up in here. We have this in, gonna put the top on. And I'm gonna pulse it a little bit just to get that salt and the oil all throughout it. Now I'm gonna add in here the water. Let me push these back. Oh, there go my peas over. Okay, and that's why I like these cups because you, you know it's easy to pour. And I'm just gonna pulse while I'm doing it. And it's gonna to come to like a ball in here. already starting as you see and it's still a little bit dry in here see how it looks like a bunch of uh, maybe breadcrumbs or cookie crumbles it's starting to get to that point so what I'm going to do is just going to add a little bit more in and it should start to go to a ball and there it goes and that's it now that took just a few seconds to mix up there. Okay, so you know, I'm gonna take my rings off. They're already taking a beating. I can never get them clean after I do. Because we are gonna we are gonna use our hands, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna get this out of the way. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this flour that I had, and I'm just gonna dust the board really lightly with it. And then I'm gonna take this out, the blade all this off see and hardly anything sticks to it and we're gonna get the rest of this out god I love the smell of dough I just love the smell of it see that I'm just gonna get my hands on there and then we're gonna start to knead it together and it already is so nice and soft when, when you need something you take it up like this and you push it down with your heel turn it push it up down just keep turning it and you just keep taking the top, bringing it to the back and pushing it down. Keep turning it like this. And then it'll start to come together. I can already feel like the more you work something, the more the glutens, um, like a flour product, the more the glutens come out of it. And it's already getting very elasticy. I can feel it. And we have to knead this, but we don't want to do it too long because it gets really, really tough. Just like a lot of people like to overwork meatballs and they sit there and they stir it and then they pound them and press them and they just come out hard and you want a really nice meatball. So always remember that when you're making a meatball. Don't, don't make it, um, don't mix it too long. Just like this. We're just going to keep kneading this here and it's going to start to get to a shiny consistency. It's going to look shiny on the outside and then... It's going to be very elastic so where you poke it then you know it's done now this is a really good workout <laughs> my arms i always remember my mom made homemade bread and she would knead it like knead the dough like this and stuff it would rise and she'd punch it and you know back then you know they didn't uh, they were a lot of stay-at-home moms they cooked they cleaned they did everything around the house they didn't go to the gyms they didn't work out and stuff but now that I think about it, she didn't need to. My mom was always in good shape, but now I know why. I mean, this is a lot on your arms. So this is pretty much good. And when you poke it, see how it's coming back up? It's not staying with my finger in it. The elasticity in it is perfect to make cavatellis. So this is what you would do. Now you're gonna cut it in half because we're not gonna use all this at one time. And you would cover this with a nice um, damp cloth so it doesn't get real dried out. And with these, we're just gonna cut them. This is how simple this is. And this dough is gonna turn into an amazing, amazing um, 
dinner. I mean, it's when you see how easy this is. I'm just gonna show you here a little bit of the, how you make these. So it's three ingredients, but now we're just gonna use four fingers, not even a rolling pin. We're just gonna take this and we're gonna roll it until it gets nice and long. See that? We're just using our four fingers and it's already getting longer and longer. And we don't want it real thin like spaghetti. We might want to turn that pot of water on now that we're like higher so that it, um, still is boiling it though. So boiling? Good. Okay. Okay, so we have these like this, right? We don't want it real thin like spaghetti. And you just take them like this and you just cut little squares, right? Almost like little pillows. And this is the secret now to making um, a cavatelli. You put your knife right in here and you pull toward you. And you get that line in there and that's, that's a cavatelli. See? I'm using the perfect knife. I've had these knives for years. I got them off of um, Cooking with Nona. It's an Italian um, website that I love. It has like all cooking products. And this knife I use for everything. But see how it is? It's just a little bit of an indent, just like that. And then you gotta take another one, roll them out like this. This is, this is actually the hardest part is rolling them out. But if you have kids at home, they'll probably love this. I mean, this is almost like an edible Play-Doh. My kids used to love that. They used to love Play-Doh. And then we're just gonna take them again and cut them into little squares like this. It's really simple. Take your knife, put it almost towards the end and just pull it toward you. And you get that cut and almost looks like a little seashell. See that? They, they go towards you. So I didn't, I mean, I brought this today. I will finish making these later so we can serve them um, at the restaurant. We'll just put these up over here because I already have some already made for you guys. But after this point, I wanted to explain to you, these have to rise. So I, like I put these in here and these are all ready to go into a pot and become um, cooked now. But this was my other um, dough from this morning I still have. So that's my second one and it's already risen for 30 minutes also. It's rested, I should say, it's rested. So those are both ready to go. These have to be 30 minutes. Um, it's all gonna be in the direction, so don't worry. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put these in that pot of water. And then we're, as they're cooking, we're going to make our sauce. So let me get this um, sauce going here. We're gonna turn this burner on. I think I got the hang of it now, can you believe it? How many weeks later? Uh -huh. And we're just gonna put like a tablespoon of olive oil in there. And I'm going to put four um, tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I always tell you guys, I like to cook with unsalted butter. You know, I just, I like to control my own salt in there. And I just feel it has a sweeter taste than tasting all that salt in the butter. And we're gonna put this in the pan with it and let it melt down. Now there's something about putting olive oil and uh, butter together. Uh, it's just it's such a good flavor together and it helps the vegetables um, saute down. It has almost like a little bit of a creamy consistency to it. Let me know when that water is um, boiling out, okay? It's boiling. Okay. <laughs> so in this pan, we're gonna make our sauce now while this is boiling. And if you didn't have time to do all of this at once, you could make your cavatelli one day and put them in here and save it and cook them up another time for another night. Um, if you had a long time, you could do the whole thing in one day. Um, the sauce is really, really simple. We took the olive oil and the butter and that's melting down. And now I just have um, sliced mushrooms here. Easy now guys, today in the store they're already sliced for you. These are just the white button mushrooms, but you could use the porta baby portabellas and cremini mushrooms, or even do a mixture because every mushroom honestly does taste different. So I'm gonna take one of your spatulas here. I'm getting quite the collection. Okay, and I put that in, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put my mushrooms in here. And we're gonna cook these down, and now this is um, two cups of mushrooms, it's 16 ounces. So we're gonna put that in. And like with any, most vegetables, wow, look at this guy, huh? We are really boring him to death, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He doesn't smell anything you like shit, that's why. And it's funny, Gracie didn't come watch me today either. I guess she doesn't like smell of pasta. All right, so if you don't, people were like, well, if I, this will be great for my husband. He loves mushrooms. I do not. And if you're like Abby, who suddenly developed a mushroom allergy, it's so depressing because we make a lot of things with mushrooms. I know. I love them so much. they really bad. Um, we're just going to salt and pepper these down because the water pulls the moisture um, from the mushrooms and they just start cooking much faster, as you see. They are getting all browned up. While these are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the cavatelli in this pot. Turn it up maybe a little bit now. All right. I should have brought my spider, but I'll, I'll just put these in by hand. It's fine. Now, the, the old saying, you know, when it rises to the top, it's done. And that's going to be true with these. Now, if we had the spider, remember, we just drop them in there like that. But I'm sorry. I got to get you one. <laughs> this is going to be the advantage of her cooking, me cooking at her house. This is at Abby's house. I'm not even at my own house. I'm sure you guys know that by now. All right. We're putting these in. Really, Trad? <laughs> He's got nothing to say today. It's one of those lazy days for Trad. Abby and I went shopping when we came back home. He went absolutely crazy. Like she had been gone forever. Okay, so we're just going to stir these around a little bit so they don't all stick. And while these are cooking, this is high? This is, yeah. You got to do this one. Yeah, that's oh, high. Oh, I did the wrong. Okay. Okay, so these are cooking. And look at the um, mushrooms are sauteing already. They don't take long at all. I don't like really mushy mushrooms, so these will be pretty fast. Do I ever use what? Olive oil, olive oil in, in the, the boiling, boiling water. water? No, I mean, you can put oil in there if you don't want it to stick. A lot of people, um, you know, do that. Um, I like to oil my pasta after it comes out, after it's been rinsed and it doesn't stick together. Um, but you do put salt in the water, remember that. Okay, now I'm gonna add to this a cup of peas. So again, if you don't like peas, you can use anything else. It may be a little bit hard to substitute for the mushrooms. I'm trying to think of maybe something else you could put in there. Um, but these are frozen peas. Um, I never like to use canned vegetables because they have a lot of sodium and the fresh ones here are really, really um super sweet i love them look at this nice color already huh yeah i love it i love it okay and then to this with the salt and pepper now i'm going to add a quarter of a cup of mascarpone cream to this you know me i love my mascarpone i'm going to wait for these to cook down just a tad bit more but if you didn't like peas add any other green vegetable that you might like um of course i asparagus and shrimp all those kind of, or uh, uh, um, asparagus and spinach. Oh, I was like, what? Well, <laughs> you could add shrimp to this dish now that I'm thinking about it. Chicken, sausage, bolognese would go really good with that. Waiting for my pasta here to come back up. He's starting to smell food, this guy. Okay, so now I'm going to put a quarter of the cup of the mascarpone cream in here. And this is so good because you know this is about a quarter of a cup. You can save this for, put this in your refrigerator and save it for um, another dish. It's great to make icing with if you um, have a homemade cake. Um, you can make icing with it. I mix a little cream cheese with it, a little um, powdered sugar, a little vanilla. And it makes a really nice one. See how nice this is cooking down? So we're, this is the, going to be the sauce that we're going to put the cavatelli. That looks so good. Doesn't it? Yeah. And look how easy these are. Yeah. This is almost all melted down. Just waiting now. You want to put the cover on the pasta? That'll probably definitely have it cook faster. We're waiting for this to cook down. Now I want to get a little spoon and I want to taste this because I just want to see. It's going to be hot. How do you do that? 
I was just, as I tasted it, I'm just thinking you probably add like, um, if you added ham in here, what would this be? Basciola. Yeah, look at that, huh? We do have a dish at the restaurant. We mix it with tortellini, and this is the ingredients that go in there. And it, it just dawned on me. I don't know why. You could add prosciutto in here. You could add the tortellini. The basciola. All right, so we're waiting for the um, cavadels to come up to the surface there. So that's going to go a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more um, <clears throat> pepper to this. Does anybody have any questions on there? Do I need to say hi to somebody? Mm -hmm. I know everybody is probably tired of social media these last couple days and staying away, and I get that. And I was glad to be able to do the video today because it's just um, enjoyable and it's just something else different to look at besides all of the stuff on the news today. There we go. And we are going to serve this tonight at the restaurant. We're going to make cavatelli. And I wanted to thank everybody about um, signing up for my cooking demo. Um, it's November 14th, 11 o'clock at the restaurant. I already have, it's funny because I was only going to do 20 um, reservations and I just had such a great, great response to it. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled. I have 30. So we're going to be cooking together. At first I said to myself, I'm going to do a demo. But then I said, I'm going to let everyone else get their hands dirty. So you guys are going to be doing the cooking two so we're gonna do that we're gonna um we're gonna make it we're gonna eat it um and we're gonna have some wine together and i went ahead and i made some um really nice goodie bags so everybody take home little treats from amici's so it's just gonna be a wonderful time uh it's just 25 dollars, so i'm really looking forward to seeing everybody on the 14th it's gonna be a great time so the last ingredient i have here is parmesan cheese and um I kind of want to wait to put this in because it'll really bind this up. Yeah. So I don't, I don't really want to do that. Oh God! Whoops. Oh, they are done. Yay! That is um, an old pot from Anthony's grandma, right? Yeah. And those old pots like that, they um, They're they quick. really crank the heat. Okay, so you know me and my fresh ingredients, guys. So I just got a little bit of fresh basil here. Look, I wish you could have smell a vision. Mm. It's my it's my favorite. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that in there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get the um, cavatelles out of here. What kind of flour is this? A bunch of people kept asking. Yeah, it's zero zero. It's it's not all purpose flour. This is a special flour that you make pizzas with and doughs. Um, this is it right here. See, it says um, zero zero. If worse came to worse, like I had to go to a specialty shop to get it. But if worse comes to worse and you cannot find it, you can use all-purpose flour. You just have to knead it a little bit more because it's a little bit tougher. So I'm putting all these. Look at this pasta, huh? Did you turn this off? I'm trying to get out as many as I can. So you kind of have like a mini spider here. Yeah. You have a slotted spoon, which is working fine. Everybody knows you keep your pasta water because this way, if this turns out to be really thick, we can add a scoop of it in here and it'll thin it out. That's pretty much all of them. Guys, this was half of that dough ball that we made. Half. So think about that. Look at all this that it's making and that's half a dough ball. And you have the other one left that you can make more with. And yes, you can freeze them. So you make them and you could put them in an airtight um, like Rubbermaid container and you can freeze them, and then when you want to cook them, you can just throw them right in the water and they'll cook. All right, I'm ready to turn this off. And I'm gonna put it over here. I have a beautiful, if you wanna follow me as, I have a beautiful plate right here that we can just go ahead and put this on. Look at that. God, it looks good. Are you gonna be able to try a little bit? Yeah, I'll do more. I know she got that tummy thing going. <laughs> okay, and now I'm just gonna sprinkle it with some Parmesan cheese, like that. And I'm gonna put on the rest of my basil. And there you go, guys. You have homemade cavatelli with a mushroom sauce. Here you go. You ready to try these little pillows? They really are an amazing pasta. It's so hot. I know, but I want to make sure I get um, 
one of the pastas in there and a bikini and a mushroom. It's too hot. <laughs> mm. I love it. Super good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. This is a great little um, pasta. It goes great with a bolognese sauce. Uh, just a marinara sauce, and, you know, like a heartier cream sauce like this. It's very good. I think you guys um, will enjoy making it. It's good to use your hands, whether you're digging in the dirt or making pasta, all those kind of <laughs> things. They're good. They're very therapeutic for you. So don't be afraid to get a little flour, a little schmutz under your nails. You can always be cleaned out. You guys, I will be back next week at 2 o'clock. And I thank you for watching. And um, have a great weekend, everybody, and enjoy.